Good morning, everybody. Here's the uh, the weekend, Saturday, uh, June twelfth. Man, I spaced out so much. I got up this morning at the crack of dawn, just going, "Oh man, I'm I'm so glad to be up. I can I can watch Sunday CBS Sunday Morning, which is one of my favorite shows." But it comes on like at six a.m. and uh, so I got up and I turned on the TV and I'm sitting there going, "It's Saturday. <laughs> I'm a day early." Um, so I took advantage of it before we get really hot today and went out and fertilized and watered in all my roses. There's got to be at least, at least about a hundred rose bushes here uh, uh, throughout the yard. So got that done. I don't have to think about that for a while because we're going to be going into a serious heat wave this week where it's supposed to be like 105, 107 degrees and, uh, that's when I watch my uh, water meter start spinning like a helicopter is going to take off. And I watch my bank account sinking like a stone for the water bill. But I, I love the plants. I, I'll skip a meal to water my plants. That, that's for sure. Um, uh, it, was, it was weird. I had that, that anomaly yesterday where um, I, it had never happened to me before where I, I put up the... Uh, the video and there was and there was no thumbprint of the video I was going what's going on and then when I clicked on it of course the video played and then about halfway through the day all of a sudden it turned up I mean it's just weird stuff that goes on with the internet and all this and you know, I, I I can never second guess it because I don't even know how to what the first guess would be so um so it just happened so I threw in that little you know explanation about that and you know, I, I try to keep everybody abreast, even though half the people on here at least probably know a hell of a lot more than I do. So they're just going, would you just calm down and let it go? Um, so I did, and it showed up. So I'm going to head off in another direction today with another really wonderful um, singer-songwriter. Um, it was also cool yesterday. You know, this is one of the things I really appreciate when I started looking through the chat window of uh, on the Turley Richards tape uh, uh, post Turley wrote in and uh, it was really fun you know get some writing in there and uh, and today is Turley's 80th birthday he's still just this big rascal um, so he's a, he's a definitely a, a young 80 uh, and he's still got his voice and everything he's an amazing cat so it was really it was really neat to hear from him and then I had a really fun session with Herb Peterson yesterday afternoon actually doing a couple of Christmas songs for a, for a movie project. Um, and it's always weird when you're cutting Christmas songs in June, July, things like that. But generally, if they actually want to do anything with them by Christmas, they have to be done early in the year so they can finish them up completely and do whatever, the you know, artwork, promotion, setting things up. So um, crazy. I mean, it's always funny. You go into... Capitol Records when we did like Aaron Neville's Christmas and it was in the middle of summer and there was cri fake Christmas trees and Christmas lights everywhere and they got the uh, temperature in the studio down a bit so it felt kind of cold because you'd go outside and be 100 degrees outside. Um, but I'm going to, I digress, so I am going to uh, jump into today's video. And um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you were fans of the group Bread. And um, I was really, I, I knew the, all the guys, but it was really fun when I got called to go in the studio uh, with James Griffin to do one of his solo projects. And this one, I got my, my copious notes here. Here we go. Um, this was an album uh, that we did back in 1973 called Breaking Up Is Easy. And on this album, the, um, the, the producer was James Griffin and the arranger. Uh, for all the strings and everything on here was the great Marty Page, David Page's uh, from Toto's father, who's a great arranger. Uh, the band on this one was um, myself and Mike Botts, who I did some of Mike's solo stuff in an earlier video, and I may uh, review some of that because Mike was really good, great drummer, great singer, and a really good songwriter. Um, and he eventually ended up in the band Bread. But when we made this album, it was Mike Botts on drums, Russ Kunkel on drums, uh, James Griffin, uh, Jeff Skunk Baxter from Doobies and 
the, you know, I mean, Skunk is an institution in, in the L.A. studio scene. Uh, so it was James Griffin, Skunk Baxter, and John Miles on guitar. Uh, the great, great Larry Nechtel on keyboards, who uh, played the piano on the, the uh, beginning of Bridge Over Troubled Water. He played bass on Mr. Tambourine Man. Larry was part of the Wrecking Crew, and... Uh, I did lots of sessions with Larry, one of the coolest guys I ever worked with. Um, Curtis Amy on sax, who did some work. Uh, I think the last time I worked with Curtis, I think it was on Carol King Project. Um, and Jim Horn playing sax. Uh, and Jim Horn played on our first section album. And I played on I Am Woman and all kinds of things with Jim. And he's come up in a whole bunch of my uh, videos. And years ago, he ended up moving down to Nashville, and uh, I haven't seen him much since he moved there, um, but we'd spent a lot of time in L.A. And then um, Mike Eisberg um, on keyboards. Um, so it was interesting, though, when Bread began, um, James was, was one of the, uh, the founding members of it, um, along with David Gates and Rob Royer and Jim Gordon was on on drums with the group, but he eventually left, and that's when Mike Botts uh, took over the drum seat in it. Um, but Griffin was a, really, uh, along with, um, he had a partner, Michael Gordon, and they were a, a, a really a big songwriting team uh, during the, the, the late 60s, and uh, uh, wrote songs for artists, you know, make sure I get these all right, Ed Ames, Gary Lewis, Bobby V, Brian Hyland, the Standells, Leslie Gore, Sandy Nelson, Cher. I mean, lots of, lots of people. It's really funny. When I would see the name of the group, the Standells, I always liked that because one of my first really good amps was a Standell Super Imperial. I kind of wish I still had that. It was a pretty bitchin' amp. You know, and then I look back and then I see Sandy Nelson on there. And Sandy was a, a, a drummer of some renown. <clears throat> and he uh, was in an accident and lost a leg. And I remember doing an album with him because he had a, a real famous album. I think it was called Let There Be Drums. And all the drummers like were into it. But when I got called to do this, this his album, I go in there and there's he's there and there's another guy right next to him. And the other guy only had a kick drum in front of him because Sandy had lost his right leg. So Sandy was playing everything, and this guy next to him was playing kick drum, and they mixed it so it sounded like Sandy was doing everything. But it was a trip, you know. And then I've done a whole bunch of work with Cher over the years, so it's always fun. And then my first, my first official studio album was with Brian Hyland. So it's interesting how all the, these things just all kind of meld together. Um, um, it was it was interesting though because Rick Griffin and 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 uh, David Gates were really the uh, the front the songwriting team and all that and uh, songs like Baby I'm a Want You and Make It With You um, James sang and wrote a lot of the songs uh, but Gates's songs were the ones that got airplay and it really ended up creating friction between them because it was becoming like David Gates and Bread. And James was, you know, I mean, he was like up there as a partner in this, but he wasn't getting the same focus. So he finally went um, solo. And he did, uh, there's a lot of information about things that he did, different collaborations that he made um, during the course of things. Um, uh, let me see if I can find anything here. Yeah, he worked with Terry Sylvester from the Hollies on an album called Griffin and Sylvester, and in 82 was a member of Black Tie with Randy Meisner and Billy Swan. Randy Meisner, you know, original bass player and singer from uh, the Eagles. Um, and T-Bone Burnett produced them. Uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff. A, a, a group that, that he formed called the Remingtons, and uh, a lot of things went on in his career. And then they finally, at one point, uh, they reunited in the late 90s. Um, uh, with bread and toured. And I think at that point, I went and saw their show and um, it was Mike Botts and um, Larry Nechtel and James Griffin and David Gates and um, I think Dean Parks 
was playing guitar with them, as I recall. But uh, so it's, it's, it was, you know, one of those careers. A lot of these people, they don't have like this kind of a career. They have this kind of a thing that just goes on and on. But they they always, in the back of their, you know, of, of their situation, um, bread was always there when they when they were able to reconcile and uh and put it together you know they were always guaranteed really successful tours because bread had such a huge following um but sadly um uh james passed away in 2005 he was only 61 but he died of cancer and uh, so many i mean this is really one of the tragic things is so many of the people i've featured on this channel are no longer with us both artists and the musicians and producers. So many of the studios are gone. They were bulldozed down and turned into strip malls and parking lots. So, so much of this, there's a, you know, for me going into the Wayback Machine, I was I was just watching a, uh, a video I was thinking about uh, doing this song. It was one of Veronique Sanson's songs uh, called Rianca de Lo. And I, they, there's a video up and it shows us in the studio with it and Carlos Vegas playing drums on it. Uh, you know, and I miss Carlos every day. There, there's so, so many of these that, that keep uh, rearing their heads, and I just kind of find myself taking a deep breath for a moment and going, God, I miss him. You know, miss her. There's there's a lot, of, a lot that are gone. So, But I thought I'd play a couple of, of songs from, from this James Griffin album. Let me set my copious notes aside. It's, you know, somewhere... Somewhere I've spent my entire career working as a bass player, but I'm getting probably most known for three things. Copious notes, a squeaky chair, and a finger. Who would have thought? I don't know. But let's listen to some music. This is, this will be fun. Uh, this is a song called Lifeline from, from the album that I've been describing. So here we go. Nineteen seventy three. Oh, always the phone. Just a moment 
I was just thinking about that. That was the, the uh, that was my peace love bass on that one. The one I used on Doctor My Eyes and Stratus and our section uh, albums and stuff. It's sitting in the other room now. It's still a good workhorse instrument. <laughs> it's and then it was just fun. Those a couple of weeks ago re redoing Doctor My Eyes with Jackson and Russ using our original equipment and everything. It's a, it's a funny adventure, this life, I'll tell you. Um, here's a song called Father and Son. Let's check this one out. Oh, 